Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liliana and on this channel we discuss history and literature related topics. So make sure to stick around and subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. Today's video is going to be about what I read in a typical week at university and how I handle that with my classes, homework, and extracurricular activities. I decided to make this video because after doing some research on YouTube, I realized that the books about reading in university or reading in college were mostly like things like, oh, how to read one book a week, or I read 200 books in a year, or something along those lines. And I just felt like that was kind of a more sensational headline and that it wasn't something that was realistic for everybody to do. So I decided that I would give you guys a very real view of reading in university, both for coursework and for fun, and how to fit that in with the rest of your schedule. So that having been said, let's get to it. I am first going to open up my handy dandy little planner here, which I bought after making the Zoom University video a couple weeks back, and it has been pretty good. The fact that I can't hear my professors and see my professors talk about the homework assignment in person has made it very difficult for me to remember them mentally, which is what I've done my whole life. And so because of the whole socially distanced Zoom thing, I had to get a planner to keep track of everything that I was doing from afar. So let's open it up and look at what I have to read. Okay. So for today, I had no reading for my introduction to religion class and I had to read one chapter of the Bible and an article for my introduction to the New Testament class. The chapter of the Bible is Daniel 2 and the article is on Jewish apocalypticism. And so for Tuesday, I have two English classes. One of them I have to read 38 pages for and the second one I just have to fill out a little assignment sheet for. And that's about it. On Wednesday, I have nothing to read again for one class, but for the second class, I have to read 36 pages from the textbook. Nothing on Thursday, and on Friday, we have no class because the university decided to be nice, so nothing on Friday. Okay, so for this week, the reading seems pretty light. Um, just those kind of 30-odd pages on Tuesday and Wednesday, and, the whole in and then a book of the Bible that I have to have finished by... Friday so I can write a summary on it. So now let's get to the fun stuff because even though I just read my entire homework schedule to you, it still has no meaning. We don't know how long Daniel 2 is. We don't know how long the article for my intro to the New Testament class is. For the book that I have to read 38 pages of, we don't know if the book is this big or if it's this big. So it has no meaning. So the first thing that I do is I like to sit down with my readings and look at physically how much it is, how much space it takes up. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. So the first reading that I mentioned on my list is Daniel chapter 2. I also think that it's important to point out that biblical chapters aren't like 20 pages like chapters in regular novels are. They're usually only about two pages. However, Bibles usually have two columns per page of writing, and it's usually quite small. So it could be a lot, comparatively speaking, or it could not be a lot. It really depends. So obviously, to get a better and clearer view of my schedule, I'm going to first look up Daniel chapter 2, so I can kind of get an idea of how long it is and how much time I should allot for it in my schedule. <laughs> Okay, so we can see here chapter 2 of the book of Daniel, and like I said, biblical writing is like very condensed into a tight space, two columns, quite small. But it doesn't look to be too long, because chapter 2 starts right here, and then it goes here, here, and here, and then here and here, and it ends right here on chapter 3, so it's only about two pages long. So now that we already determined that Daniel chapter 2 is pretty short and can be read in the five minutes before class starts, the next thing that I'm going to do is look at Jewish apocalypticism and see how long that article is so I can see if I should read it right now or again before class starts. Sometimes professors really do be assigning you those 30 page articles, so important to know how long it is. It has been determined. 
The reading is only 14 pages long. I can definitely do this in maybe like a half hour, so I don't have to worry about it too much. So in order to not be repetitive for all of you who are watching, I am just going to continue to look up all of my readings for my classes and see how long they are going to take. Okay, so from what I've determined, it seems like the readings are all generally pretty easy, pretty short, except for this one, which is 36 pages long, and you can see that the book has rather large pages. And it is also quite dry, so I'm not going to be able to read all 36 pages in one sitting, so I am going to break it up between Tuesday and Wednesday and read 18 pages each day. I would say that setting a goal for yourself as far as reading is a really great thing to do to make sure that you read X amount of pages each day, especially when it's something that you don't really like or that's not really your subject of interest. You're not going to be going through it at a quick rate or wanting to read it every single day. So having a designated amount of page numbers that you're going to get through on a regular basis is really helpful. And that's what I usually do with my summer reading because I find that during summer, Reading assigned books, even if it's a book that I enjoy, is just not it. It's not fun, guys. Well, I know that at the beginning of this video, I said that I was going to discuss how you can manage a reading schedule with a homework schedule and basically everything else that involves school, classes, and whatnot. And I also know that I made a humorous comment all earlier about reading Daniel chapter 2 in the five minutes before class starts. And you know, even though it was a joke, that's sometimes how things happen. You know, you don't always have time to read things well in advance. One tip that I would have for managing these reading schedules and homework schedules and class schedules is to try to do things simultaneously. And I know that that sounds really horrible, like a really bad thing to do. But usually homework in classes is based off of the reading. So unless the professor is specifically asking you for you to give an opinion before you read the textbook, then it's usually a good idea to have the homework assignment open and then to have your book open at the same time so that if there's a question in the homework that pertains to what you're reading, you can answer it right then and there. And that way you will get both of them done quicker and you'll be able to understand kind of what the professor is looking for in their answers and what might be on the test. I know that it's not really possible for everyone every single time to always have things read in advance because reading can be very time consuming. Reading takes a lot of time. I said earlier that I put a page number for myself every day. For example, when I was reading this book for my summer reading for one of my classes, this book is around 500 pages long, and so I told myself that I would read 50 pages each day, and so I got it finished in about a week and a half. But that's not something that always works for everybody, because maybe you don't have enough time before your next class to break it up into nice chunks for you to read every day. Or maybe you can't read 50 pages a day because it gets really tiring and boring to you. That's completely relatable, because that's what happened to me with this book, because I didn't like it that much. So if you feel like setting a set number of pages every day isn't going to work for you, set a number of minutes every day. It really opens it up for you to take the time that you need with the reading and still know that you're getting a certain amount done every day. Now, if you don't have time to read the reading at all before class, there are a couple things you can do. One, make sure you have a friend in every single class and have them explain whatever the reading was to you. But that is not really a good option because not many people have a friend in every single one of the classes that they take. And secondly, if you just don't ever do the reading or if you really don't have the time to do the reading hardly ever at all, then your friend is going to start to get frustrated with you for just asking them every single class period, oh, what was the reading about? And it'll really just be a messy situation. But another option that is also helpful is to read the last paragraph, especially if it's an article or a chapter of a textbook. 
If you read the first and the last paragraph, then you'll get a working understanding of what that chapter overall or that article overall was about. This doesn't work as well in novels because authors aren't going to summarize what happened at the end of each chapter. That's not how literature works. That's not how fiction works. And now we get to the most difficult portion of this video, extracurriculars. Now, I know that a lot of people might say, well, if you have homework, then just don't go to your extracurriculars. Your homework is more important. And that's very true. Obviously, it's not a good idea for you to be going out to eat every Tuesday evening with your club when you have 50 pages to read that night before a class. However, I don't always agree with that sentiment because sometimes in extracurricular activities like clubs or volunteering or anything that you do, sometimes there's these really important events that you can't miss or something that you've been planning for and looking forward to for a long time and then your homework just randomly comes up out of nowhere and then it completely destroys the plans that you made a month ago. So there is indeed a solution for when that happens. And the solution is not disregard your homework completely. The solution is, again, multitask. For example, if your university is having a club day and all the clubs are out in front in the quad of the campus with their little tables advertising their club, and it's your job to be sitting there at the table to talk to potential new members, who's to say you can't take an assignment with you and work on it in between talking to people? I know that this sounds very hard because usually if you're sitting there and if you're sitting there with a friend or somebody else in your club, you're going to be talking and having a conversation and you're not going to be doing work because you're talking or you're trying to get people to join your club. But there are times when nobody comes by your table at all and it's in those times that you can just sneak a page in, get down the answer to one question. And even if you only end up reading one page or doing one question, it'll still have been progress that you made. I feel like everything that I said right now is extremely obvious, but I also feel like Maybe by me reiterating it and restating it, it'll help somebody who is watching that yes, it is okay to take homework to an activity and try to work on it in the quiet moments when there's not much going on. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and put on the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I put out a new video. Thanks again for watching. Bye!